One of the joys of being able to work as a painter is just how much room we have to experiment, learn, and find new ways to express ourselves as well as our subjects. Lately, I've had several requests to paint commemorative pieces using old black and white photographs, which was, I thought, a perfect opportunity to dive into a completely different technique than you've seen me use so far on this channel. The method I'm going to be talking about today is inspired by the monochrome technique that Richard Schmid describes in Alla Prima 2. What stood out to me about these pieces is that by limiting their color, they are every bit as beautiful as full color pieces while capturing this quiet and perhaps even deeper mood. If you have a copy of Alla Prima 2 handy, I would definitely recommend that you look at the monochrome chapter and just take in all of the inspiration. I'll put a link to the book below in case you don't have it and want to pick it up because they are so beautiful. You, you need to look at these paintings. Monochromatic pieces are especially great fits for black and white photos for one simple reason. Inventing color is exceptionally hard, and I'll explain why. If you're familiar with Photoshop, this will be a familiar visual, but I hope even if you aren't, this will be a convincing demonstration nonetheless. So in Photoshop, the way you select a color, or one way you can select a color, is through a series of sliders. In this case, I want to talk about hue, saturation, and brightness sliders, which work more or less the way they sound. Let's start with brightness, which corresponds in artistic terms to value. So taking a pixel all the way from pure white all the way to pure black. There are usually 256 positions on a given scale like this. And that's a pretty reasonable degree of complexity to work with, which is partly why we find value drawings and paintings to be so much more approachable. Anytime you are putting down a shape of, well, maybe not color, but sure, a shape of value in this case, you're basically just choosing between 1 and 256, and that's as complex as it gets. But then you add hue, and along with it is 256 more levels of complexity. When brightness and hue interact, those numbers don't just add together. They actually represent 256 squared. So you go from 256 color options to 66,000 color options. Then when you introduce saturation or chroma, there are another 256 levels of complexity, which brings possible color outcomes all the way to 16 million. This is all to illustrate that it is much easier to invent when only dealing with value and not introducing chroma or hue variations. It turns out that nature really is the greatest artist. I've never seen a painter invent effects of color and light that nature could not outshine. So for that reason, when dealing with black and white photos, monochromatic paintings just make the most sense. Even if a painting is small or has some degradation that's occurred over time or just doesn't have a lot of detail, I'm fairly confident that with only 256 options, I can fill something in in a way that feels whole and satisfying and believable. On the other hand, if I had 16 million options, it would be incredibly unlikely that I would create something that was as beautiful as someone had witnessed on that day in person. So what's my method of creating monochromatic paintings? Well, first, I create a very limited palette to work from. It usually involves some combination of the following colors, which are all earth colors. Terra Rosa, Transparent Oxide Red, Transparent Oxide Brown, Transparent Oxide Yellow, Yellow Ochre Pale, and then my only non-earth color in here is Viridian, which I can use to desaturate any of these warm colors. You'll notice that one color is very notably absent here, which is white. And this is because my method of working monochromatically uses only transparency to achieve lighter values. 
And if your next thought is to wonder how quickly I must have to work to do this, that's a very good question. The trick with this particular process is that because you achieve lighter values only by erasing, you have to work in a highly compressed timeline so that your painting doesn't set up before you're satisfied with the piece and are ready to call it done. Now, as many of you have noticed or asked in the comments, with my color pieces, I usually allow a good bit of time between sittings. This isn't because I'm trying to work in layers, but simply a side effect of how I like to work. I like to take breaks from the piece, get some distance from them, and be able to come back with fresh eyes. Now, a side effect of that is that the painting does dry, and I don't love that aspect, but I don't need it either. But with these monochromatic paintings, I do not have that luxury. Instead, I have to block off full, uninterrupted days to ensure that a painting is completed before it's too late to go back and make changes. For a small piece like this, that usually means about two full work days, um, give or take a little bit, but with a larger painting that I'll share with you um, in an upcoming video, it was closer to a full week, and I'll talk a little bit more in that video about how I extended the working time of my piece. For this painting, though, it was essential to have the right surface that was not prone to staining so that I could easily erase all the way back to pure white throughout the entirety of my process. I, in general, either opt for a lead alkyd ground um, because it's not very abs absorbent or prone to staining, or I find a linen like I used here um, that has a particularly slick feel to it. So for this piece, I opted for Claussen's C15 double primed linen, which gave me a beautiful texture and a forgiving work surface that I could easily erase all the way back to white with just a little bit of Gamsol. Um, even after the paint had been sitting on the canvas for several hours. With these stipulations being said though, my process mirrors what you've already seen in my full color paintings. I start with a thinned out wash of my ground color plus Gamsol, um, and then I dive right into blocking in my subject, going from large shapes to small and refining the drawing as I go. I might try to stay lighter in general to stay on the safe side with these pieces. Um, theoretically, if I left the lightest parts all the way white and I had a pretty high degree of confidence about the drawing, maybe I wouldn't have to actually erase. But it's just not really the way I work. I think if I were a watercolor painter, this would come pretty naturally. But for me, um, I just, I would rather work on a compressed timeline and not just be swapping between pieces um, and instead have the full luxury of being able to add to the painting as well as subtract. So speaking of subtraction, in places where I do need to lift off color, I simply put some Gamsol on a Q-tip or a clean brush and I can wipe away and go all the way back to the white of the canvas throughout this video that you're seeing. Thankfully, in this piece, I did not need to do much of that subtraction, but in an upcoming video, you're going to see a whole lot of, of that, as well as all of the techniques that I use to achieve that even after the paint begins to dry. But on this painting, one thing I noticed is that working with a lot of solvent here on a slick surface uh, became really delicate, fussy work. The paint has much more of a mind of its own than you might be used to working with, and I had to be very careful not to touch a passage of paint once I liked the way that it looked, because overworking it tended to have disproportionately irritating repercussions. You might at this point be tempted to ask why I wouldn't just work in watercolor, and my answer is that I love the luminosity as well as just the durability of oil. Like Schmid, I like the idea of creating a piece inspired by sepia or Conti crayon, but with a medium that is ultimately more flexible and forgiving, which oil is. So dealing with some fussiness in a compressed timeline for all of these advantages is a trade I happily make. 
I've always enjoyed doing value studies and have found that this method in these warm colors are now my preferred method for tackling monochromatic pieces, especially for portraits painted from black and white photos. So I'm curious, have you ever used this method before? I'd love to hear what your experience was like and what questions you may have. If you enjoyed this video, learned something, or felt inspired to create a painting like this one, please give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, and hit the bell icon so you see any time I have a new video out for you. And until then, I hope you and your families are safe, doing well, and I wish you very happy painting.